Uh, now we will demonstrate how uh, to take the intraocular pressure. The first thing to do is that you ask the patient to put her chin on the uh, plastic shell and she has to force her head in front. And now after uh, putting a numbing cream, you instruct the patient that uh, this plastic part will touch your eye. As we will see right now, okay, and now you take the intraocular pressure and that's it okay and then you ask the patient to uh, go back now <clears throat> this device has some limitations that you have to understand the first thing is that it doesn't really record the intraocular pressure accurately for thin corneas so patients with uh, who did lasik Patients who, uh, uh, for example, are, they have keratoconus or they have a thin cornea, this uh, doesn't li really record the intraocular pressure well, and usually the intraocular pressure is, uh, let's say, negatively false. So they might have a high pressure, but the record here is normal. This is one thing. Uh, another uh, thing is the, um, <clears throat> uh, this is a contact method. So every time you have to take this out, you have to clean it well, and then you have to put it back. Okay, so um, in, you know, to take the hygiene into consideration, this is not an A plus machine. Okay, unlike for example, the air puff or uh, the other um, contact methods like the tunnel pen. Um, why do we use it? We use it because it's cheap. It's uh, very available and it's very easy actually uh, to uh, add it to your machine, as you can see here. <clears throat> Usually the uh, mean uh, corneal thickness for an optimal um, measurement is around 550 microns. If it's below that, you have to add more millimeter mercury in the correction. If it's less, you have to subtract uh, some millimeter mercury uh, in order to get the actual intraocular pressure. Um, I hope this concludes some of the most important tips in uh, uh, the uh, gold mentonometer, and I hope to see you in the next session. Thank you for joining.